the setting ablaze of a bus rapid transit BRT vehicle in Ogudu along the Oroshoki Expressway in Lagos last Wednesday was a sad reminder of the evil effects of the takeover of Lagos State by touts and street urchins who take the laws into their hands at every opportunity. Now, according to a statement by the Director of Public Affairs and Enlightenment Department of the Lagos State Traffic Management Agency or Authority, LASMA, Adebayo Taufik, hoodlums in the area set ablaze the bus belonging to the Lagos State Bus Service Limited. Uh, recall that also uh, one of the fallouts of the October 2020 NSARS protest was the takeover of Lagos State by touts and hoodlums who blocked highways to extort commercial vehicles, heavy-duty trucks, and other road users hiding under the cover of the NSARS protest. These hoodlums had set ablaze 80 BRT buses uh, in Uyibu and Ojodubega areas of Lagos State. Joining us to discuss the mainness of thuggery and touts in Lagos is... Uh, uh, Deji Awabide, he's a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, Deji, for joining us. Good evening. Good evening, Miriam. Thank you for having me. Great. Deji, uh, as a lawyer um, and also a Lagosian, obviously, um, it's not news that um, Lagos has a thug stroke tout problem. I mean, we've seen it display itself every single day during elections, during protests. And even on a normal day, you just hear that some touts were fighting in one place or the other. But the one that's more of a problem is how these people uh, continually extort from unknown, you know, or rather normal citizens, passers-by. Um, some of them would claim that they are working at the behest of a certain government agency or parastata and their tax collectors as opposed to the normal people who are expected to come and collect taxes. Let's start from there. The average Lagosian um, is facing some trauma because of touts in Lagos. Have you experienced it? And why do you think that this has grown over time? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, as it relates to Togri in Lagos, I'm sure it's, it's not new to anybody who's lived in Lagos, who's had any business to do in Lagos, that these talks are a part and parcel of the total package of Lagos. And, and regrettably, uh, they've done more harm than good to the economic well-being of the state and also to the citizens of the state, of, of the country who are resident in the state and also to Lagosians. I've also had my own personal encounters with them. Um, sometimes, I mean, I've, I've, had, I've had a running with them twice. Uh, the first time I was coming back from court on the island, heading to my chambers on the mainland, and then I had a flat tire. Uh, somewhere around the Adekuli descent, uh, heading into um, Yaba, Alagomeji area. And then from nowhere, six different guys appeared from that bridge. I mean, when, you, when you pass through the bridge, you don't see anybody. So within a, within, within a minute, I was accosted by six different guys who, yes, uh, tried to render assistance, you know, but for a fee. Uh, of course, look, I was lucky that it happened in the afternoon, so uh, I wasn't really scared for my safety. I knew, I knew that if any push comes to show, I would probably disappear from the scene, you know. But and uh, there are several several instances where people are just accosted by these thugs in every corner of, of of the states. I mean, no part of Lagos is immune from this menace of thuggery, uh, and I think that it has tried because the government has enabled it. And I, I think if I'm going to be brutally honest with ourselves, Togri in Lagos has thrived because there's an ecosystem that is funded and is supported by the government. And, you know, I'm you sorry, ask me I, why. I, I, I have to come in there briefly. What do you mean by it's supported and funded by government? You're saying the government gives monies to these people who are a threat, I mean, in quote, yes, to so, society. So, 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 so what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that the environment for them to thrive is provided for by the government. How do I mean? So if you go around Lagos, you will find um, a lot of these thugs. You know, of course, some of them would say that they belong to NURTW or what you now know as the Lagos State Parks and Garages, uh, and they're collecting revenue or collecting funds uh, for, for the government. But aside from that, that platform that has been given to them by the government is also what has enabled them to try. The funds that they get from all of these things that they do, of course, some part of that fund will go to the government, will also end up in government coffers. So when I say government gives a platform for them to thrive, 
or supports the ecosystem. That's what I mean. Now, apart from that economic angle to the to, to the entire debate, there's also the political angle. And okay, let me take a step back. Uh, you know that if you go to every major junction, every major bus stop in Lagos, you would find coexisting with these thoughts, policemen and last mile officials. Mm -hmm. Right? Now you will also find that most of those policemen and last mile officials do not even have a say, cannot even control these talks. So in other words, they allow these talks free reign at every opportunity. And, and, and you know, can you really blame this our uh, law enforcement agents who allow these talks free reign? You can't because their safety at that particular junction or area is not guaranteed unless those talks give approval or give them some form of protection. So you see that there's some form of uh, systemic arrangements between the law enforcement officers, either at the federal level, as, uh, as you have by the police that are standing at those points, at the state level, as you have with last mile officials, and then by those thugs who by themselves are also there, along with their friends and their cronies. Now, another thing you also notice in Lagos is that there are several spots in Lagos where you have one-way signs. Mm. Now, these one-way signs are not particularly very obvious. And even where they are obvious, you find some people who are standing in one corner, hiding behind a particular signpost, or hiding somewhere in, under a canopy, ready to apprehend anybody who flouts the law. Now, the job of, of um, arresting offenders is the job that is reserved for the police. It's not the job that is reserved for talks and talks. But if you, if, you, if you encounter these people, they will tell you that they work for the local government or they are, or they are collecting revenue for the local government. And if you go a step further, by engaging them and following them to the local government, you will find that they also have a space within the local government system that enables them access into those, that place. And they even give you tickets. I have a case in court uh, against one local government of a very a similar scenario where you have people who are not even staff of the local government accosting uh, road users and obtaining them, extorting them of funds. Now, all of these instances I've tried because the government has enabled them. The government is, un is not unaware, mind you. Uh, they're not unaware of these events, or of these people. They know where they are. They know who they are. But the other reason I was, I was getting at is that the government realizes, or the politicians realize, that in holding on to power, they require some level of um, individuals who can display some level of thuggery. Mm. And of course, they won't send their children to display this thuggery. Neither would they send you or uh, you or send my, myself or anybody else who's gainfully employed. Mm. So they need these people who they have groomed in this ecosystem to go ahead and do these jobs for them. Mm -hmm. So, so when I say they are funded and they are sustained by the local government, uh, by, by, by the government, this is what I mean. Because they cannot try. If the Lagos government decides today that there will no longer be talk green in Lagos, that will not have unemployed youths, unemployed people roaming the streets of Lagos at every junction, accosting road users, Let vandalizing vehicles, and obtaining, uh, obtaining road users, you will not see them in Lagos anymore. Let's let's talk about let's talk about the role of people because I mean if you live in Lagos you pay your taxes obviously in Lagos and so that means you have a right. But let's just do a little flashback to what happened during the elections. Um, we saw a lot of videos and pictures and some of us even experienced it in real time. Uh, how thugs prevented some people who were non-indigenous from voting um, on election day. Um, we saw how some of them were literally at polling units, telling people what parties to vote for. We saw them destroying ballot boxes. We saw them beating up people at polling units. And you said something about the fact that politicians have discovered that the only way they can hold on to power is to keep these, um, you know, so-called touts um, happy. And if you look at statistics from what I've done in my research, I've realized that these guys are growing astronomically and most of them street urchins, empowered day by day. I have, I've had a guest in the studio who said that they're, they're, they're becoming some sort of sleeper cell and, and they all have you know, responsibilities given to them and targets. Uh, but then my question is to you and every other person who lives in Lagos, who knows what is right or who has seen these people um, in action, why are we quiet about this issue and why is this not um, 
one way or the other, become a front burden issue every single day of our lives? Well, um, thank you for the question. I think the number one reason why a lot of negotiations are not particularly uh, going all out to confront the government is because they've realized that it's very difficult to wage a war against the government and win. And that's where it all, that's where... How do you mean, uh, how do you mean wage a war against the government and, and, and win? I mean, the government is just a, a percentage of us, and then we're the people who they are supposedly serving. So, so what, the do, the what do you mean by that? The government controls um, almost every major institution. For instance, in Lagos State, you have the judiciary, you have the police, you have every other every other agency of government. Now, if you decide to go against, say, you, you apprehend one of those staffs, and you take him to the police station, because as a, as a private citizen, you have the powers to also arrest an individual if you if you if you witness the commission of a crime, uh -huh. and you then decide to apprehend one of them and take him to the police station, what are the chances that that that, that individual you've arrested will not be out of the station uh, before the close of day? What are the chances that it will not be that the DPO will not be called by some higher up person asking that DPO to release the individual? Now, so what happens to you? What's the safety measure that in place for you to to to, to put yourself on the, your life on the line uh, to, for for everybody everybody else's sanity and safety? So Is there any system so, that so, protects so, you? So if if I understand you, you're saying the odds are stacked against us, and we're all just going to fall our arms because we believe that the executive controls everything, and then the voice of the common man cannot be heard. What's that? What's that? I mean, so, what's the fate the of, of the, the common man can't be heard. Then? The voice of common, the common man can be heard, and as it did been heard. But what do you find? You find suppression. You find suppression at every turn. So the opportunity to change the government usually avails the, the citizens at every election cycle. And when you have, so what did you have the last election cycle? The people spoke against the candidates of the ruling party in Lagos. And the, that, 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 that candidate lost the election. So indeed, the common people have also lent their voice to, to show their dissatisfaction with the government. So, but again, you know, that's lending your voice through the ballot box is one thing. Having the, the overall um, um, impetus and mechanism to achieve the objective of you know, replacing the entire government is another thing entirely. And that's what you find with you know, the larger society of Nigeria, that even where you find people who are willing to go the extra mile, who are willing to fight their neighbors, to, willing to stick out their neck for a better government, a better society, you always find these roadblocks that have been deliberately put in place by these people who want to retain and hold on to power. So it's not as if people don't know that it is wrong, but how do you effect that change? You can't do that, you can't effect that change unless you have political power. And that political power does not lie with the common man. It lies with the few people who are controlling... Who, who the gave these people the this political power that you make reference to? Because, again, I wonder, how much information do we have in terms of how a democracy works? Uh, because, you know, it's very easy for us to jettison our... our responsibilities as citizens, you know, and say, oh, well, they have everything. They have the army, they have the police, just as you said. And so what can we do? We'll just, uh, you know, um, just, you know, watch them. But this thing is growing. It's becoming a big problem. And it, it, it's not going to be at the doorsteps of just one person, whether the guy who lives on the mainland or on the island. It, it's going to spread. And how long are we going to keep thinking this way, as opposed to looking at ways that we can democratically get the government to see our side of things. Okay. Well, thank you for the question. Now, when when you look at it from the perspective of trying to uh, allow the government to see the you know this side that we are we are all saying, uh, I made the point earlier that it is not as if the government is not aware of what's going on. So, I mean, we, 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 what they have, what, what you have going on is that the government is playing the ostrich, right? So, you the, the, the picture that you flashed on the screen during the NSAS protest, of a guy who came to disrupt the peaceful rally, holding a cutlass, right? That guy has not been found till today. People have, people have, NGOs have, have used the pictures. Individuals have, have yes, that's the picture. Is that they not have, a failure the on the part of our law enforcement and the judiciary? Because, I mean, what, yes. what have we so, made so of all of that? So this picture is everywhere. 
So are you telling me that the government does not know who this guy is? Of course they do. But of course, it was it didn't, it didn't just come to that rally to disrupt the lottery by himself. He was engineered to do so. Right? So that's what I say. I mean, when I say that it is there's an ecosystem that is it is very organized and supported actively by the government. That's what I mean. Because the, you can't tell me that in two in, in almost almost two years of the NSAS protest, that we've not been able to locate this guy. And people have lent their voices to it. Celebrities have done so, um, mm. media houses have done so, and up till now, we've not found this person. So that's what I mean by the people being helpless in this situation. The only way we can do the, we can we can get control of political power is by a peaceful elections. Now the question is, can we have peaceful elections? Well, that's that's a big question that um, we we might have to answer the whole of this year. We'll have to think about it and tinker. Maybe in the no, the whole of I mean this first tenor uh, after May 29. But uh, Deji, we have to go because our time is up. Uh, Deji Awobiide is a legal practitioner and um, always a pleasure to have you here on Plus Politics. Unfortunately, uh, today's conversation uh, does not give us a glimmer of hope in, in the direction that we were hoping. But thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. All right. And that's the show tonight, everyone. Thank you for being part of the conversation. If you want to catch up on all of our shows previously, uh, you can go to our YouTube, which is Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on all our social media handles. Uh, be part of all our conversations. I'll be back tomorrow talking for development. I'm Mary Anacon. Do have a good evening. <laughs>